John Walter is in the midst of a sentimental journey. By all outward appearances, it would be difficult to tell that this tall, soft-spoken Columbus, Indiana resident would have witnessed some remarkable, breathtaking experiences as he soared high above Germany as a bomber pilot during World War II. Being up and looking down, particularly when you uh, did aerobatics, you know, be upside down. And, you know, the sky is <laughs> at your feet and the earth is at your head. <laughs> so it uh, was quite a thrill. John keeps a box of old photos close at hand to remind him of those who served alongside him. He's also documented their contributions in a memoir entitled My War, a document of his time in the U.S. Air Force. His book begins with early memories of the time when he heard that Pearl Harbor had been bombed in December 1941. As school ended, it became apparent that the disagreements going on overseas were not to be settled in the very near future. Also, it was becoming obvious that Uncle Sam would soon offer me a personal invitation to participate in his military activities. John did as many of his friends were doing and enlisted in the U.S. Army. For years, he had dreamed of being a pilot, and by the summer of 1944, he was fully qualified as a bomber pilot and prepared to head to the European theater. On August 7th, he wrote, I had to pinch myself as I remembered that only 17 years previously, Lindbergh had been the first to fly solo across the Atlantic. Now here I was about to do it myself. Above about uh, 25,000 feet, the temperatures are usually 50 below zero. Out of your oxygen mask, you get condensation. And in a short period of time, down the front of my jacket, I'd have a big icicle. So frostbite was a real enemy. There's a tail gunner coming out. Watch out for fighters. In his book, John documents several of his most harrowing experiences, such as his first mission, when he had to fly clear across Germany, dodging anti-aircraft gunfire and enemy planes. Pieces of shrapnel came through the windows in the top of the cockpit. One of them hit Tom on the left side, just above his flak suit and above his collarbone. He straightened up briefly, then slumped over. In a matter of seconds, he was dead. A piece of shrapnel about the size of my thumb. And it's jagged, and it's, of course, spinning or rotating, or it's not floating. And it's nasty stuff. In his book, John remembered, we walked in the front door of the hut, fully expecting to see Tom sitting on his bed. Of course, he was not there. His belongings were also gone. In the time it took us to get back to our quarters, the squadron orderlies had come in and collected and taken away all of his belongings. It was as if he had never existed. Germany looked like England from the air, and uh, it looked benign until they started shooting. In John's book, he tells of other harrowing stories, such as the time when he watched a fellow student pilot fall to his death in a training accident before he left the United States, or the time his navigator's oxygen mask malfunctioned, killing him in midair. In all, John Walter and his crew flew 35 successful missions over Germany, completing his final mission near VE Day in May 1945. Today, John is 96. He continues to keep the memories of those men alive by looking through some precious old images of his time in the service, memories he also keeps close to his heart. As he writes, There's an old saying that there are no atheists in foxholes. Well, I'm here to tell you that there are no atheists in the cockpit either. Some higher power must be watching over us. And for that, I'm thankful.